Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. My name is Katie Deal, and I'm a graduate student here at Rutgers University. Today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about deer tongue grass in native areas. So this is our poster entitled, Herbicide Application Timing Affects Deer Tongue Grass Control in Native Areas. Deer tongue grass is a C3 perennial grassy weed, and it's actually native to the Eastern United States. It has broad leaves, so it doesn't blend well with other turf species, and it produces very thick and dense rhizomes. So if you can see in this picture here, it produces these dense rhizominous mats with deep roots that make it really difficult to remove manually and remove through chemicals as well. It has two flowering periods each year, and during the second flowering period, it, it also produces a lot of lateral branches. So this forms a really dense canopy, and this weed is really difficult to remove and very problematic in native areas where it reduces the playability of, the, of these areas by just forming a really dense canopy where golfers are not able to locate their balls. But options for deer tongue grass control in low mow or native areas are quite limited. Um, they're often limited by fine fescue safety as these areas are often seeded with various fine fescue species. One of the only herbicides that's been shown to adequately control deer tongue grass is glyphosate, which is a non-selective herbicide. So fine fescue safety would be a concern, um, but the research evaluating fine fescue safety in response to glyphosate um, is, is variable. You know, sometimes it, it depends. So that can be a concern. Um, research has shown that fluazoflop is a selective herbicide that might also be promising for controlling deer tongue grass in these areas and offering more fine fescue safety. However, research has shown that these require multiple applications um, and fluazoflop can only control deer tongue when it's applied three times, which is not ideal for these low input areas. So the objective of this research was to evaluate different application timings for both flazoflop and glyphosate applications um, to see if we could optimize single herbicide applications for deer tongue grass control in these naturalized areas. So we conducted a year long field experiment in 2020 at Menhem Golf Club in Menhem, New Jersey. We evaluated the efficacy of both flazoflop and glyphosate applied once at five different application timings. And for the site selection, we selected natural deer tongue infestations that were occurring um, just outside of a golf course fairway. So you can see here on the picture in the bottom right, um, those two arrows are pointing to where those infestations were the highest and that's where we conducted this experiment. We evaluated these herbicide treatments at five different application timings. And those timings are listed in table one here. What we tried to do was select different timings that would reflect the different um, life stages of this weed. Um, so starting off in April at 75 growing degree days when it was still a smaller plant in its um, raised basil rosette form. Um, and then a second application when um, we reached 175 growing degree days, which occurred on May 26th. A third application was made during the weed flowering in June, which we looked at and made that application based on our visual evaluations. We made an application in mid-July, and then our final application was made in September when we reached 25 cooling degree days. We replicated these treatments five different times and arranged them in a randomized complete block design. And every two to three weeks from May to October, we collected data consisting of visual evaluations of both percent deer tongue grass control based on the weed injury we observed and also deer tongue grass canopy cover. And we subjected this data to ANOVA and SAS as a two by five factorial using a Glimex procedure and Fisher's protected LSD was used to separate means. And here are the results from this year long field experiment. So as you can see in table two, the effect of herbicide alone was significant on every single rating date. 
The effect of application timing alone was also significant too on several rating dates. But we did see that by 14 weeks after treatment, um, there was an interaction that was occurring between herbicide treatment and application timing. So I'm going to be going over all of those results briefly, um, starting with figure three. And this figure is a um, representation of the percent deer tongue grass control provided by each treatment as of the final rating date that occurred on October 22nd, 2020. So as you can see here, the glyphosate treatments, which are in the purple, are providing better uh, deer tongue grass control than any of the flozophobic applications, with the exception of that early April application. We saw that pretty consistently this April application provided the least deer tongue grass control for both herbicide treatments. But of those glyphosate treatments, the um, May and June applications provided the best deer tongue grass control. While the flozophob applications as a whole did not perform as well, um, of those flozophob applications, the mid-July application provided the best control as of the final rating date in the fall. And we are going to um, go back and evaluate these treatments this spring to see how these treatments hold up. But it was pretty clear that by the end of the year, these um, April, or sorry, these May and June glyphosate applications provided the best control. So when we move down to look at these graphs at the bottom of the page, you can see the interaction here between the herbicide treatment and application timing, and it's separated by herbicide treatments. So on the left is the flazoflop treatments, and you can see that they all behave pretty similarly. Um, they're all decreasing over time, and they're not really providing any lasting deer tongue grass control. However, when we move to the right and we look at the glyphosate applications, you can see that while the red treatment, which represents the April applications made at 75 growing degree days, are also decreasing um, and not really providing lasting control, the yellow and the blue applications, which are the May and June applications, provided pretty excellent deer tongue grass control um, for the for the entire experiment. So up until the final rating date, those two treatments provided lasting and effective deer tongue grass control. So to conclude um, the results of this experiment, we found that treatments that were applied at 75 growing degree days in April and early spring provided the least deer tongue grass control, regardless of herbicide treatment. We found that glyphosate was better for controlling deer tongue grass than flazoflop, and that glyphosate applications were most effective for controlling deer tongue when they were applied at 175 growing degree days in May, and also at peak deer tongue grass flowering that occurred in June. These applications provided lasting and effective deer tongue grass control. We also saw that flazoflop, uh, while it was less effective than glyphosate, um, was optimized when it was applied in mid-June, and that provided better control by the end of the year than any of the other applications. And again, for both herbicide treatments, those April applications were the least effective. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Um, I would like to thank the USGA and the Rutgers Center for Turfgrass Science for funding this research. I would also like to thank and acknowledge Chris Boyle of the Mentham Golf Club for hosting our research trial. Um, he was very helpful and couldn't have done this research without him. So thank you all. And I would like to encourage all of you to reach out to me or any other of my co-authors through email or Twitter or whatever. And please let us know if you'd like to hear more. If you have any questions, um, we would love to be in touch with you. And thank you again for listening.